So if you were to ask me, what is Africa's biggest secret? My answer, based on working with thousands of students all across Africa, would be the high level of, and quality of the scientific education that many African students are fortunate to have enjoyed. Now, imagine that you're an African student. You grow up in rural Africa, you have some of the darkest and most beautiful skies in the world, and you wonder about the universe. And you do all the right things. You get good grades, you go to the university, and perhaps you achieve a PhD in physics or astronomy. And you go home and you're ready to study the universe. But what you're told is, we're sorry, we have hungry people in our country. So everything you do have to, has to be to address poverty alleviation and economic development. Now, that might sound like a far-fetched idea, but in reality, that's exactly what my colleagues in Africa face. Take, for example, the con to consider, out of 54 nations in Africa, only three, the ones with the red dots here, have working research telescopes. Now, let's place that number into consideration. Take a poor country like Zambia. They have more chicken licking franchises than there are countries with research um, telescopes in Africa. Also, consider the Northern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, the number of telescopes that have been sold to amateurs that can be used for research-grade astronomy is in the tens of thousands. Yet, only three nations in Africa have research-grade telescopes. And so it's no wonder that when we look at a map like this of research collaborations around the world, Africa is mostly dark. And it's not just Africa, it's primarily the entire southern hemisphere. So how do we turn a map that looks like this into one that looks like this? Believe it or not, it's a lot cheaper than you think, and because of the fact that there's a couple of coincidences that are occurring right now in astronomy, that there's no better time to do it than right now. So what are those? One movement that's taking place is that we're going from an era where we take HD pictures of the universe to one where we take HD movies of the universe. And so by doing that, we can find pulsating stars like the ones you see behind me now. Right? Some of them pulsate, and these are ideal, for example, for measuring galactic structure and for setting the cosmic distance scale and measuring distances cosmologically. Not only that, we can also measure the periodic dimming of stars that occurs when a planet orbits them and the orbit takes it within our line of sight. And if we're actually going to observe life around another planet, which I think we're on the eve of doing, we need to do it for nearby stars. However, there's a big coincidence, and that is, is that if we look at the evolution of telescopes, then what we see is that we've been making them bigger and bigger to see farther and farther and deeper and deeper into the universe. Take these famous telescopes here. Here's a one-meter telescope that did the Palomar All-Sky Survey. Here's a two-meter telescope, 50 years into the future, that did the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. And now we've envisioned the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, an eight-and-a-half-meter telescope. And as these telescopes have gotten bigger and bigger, they become more and more sensitive. And so they're actually unable to look at the nearby bright stars. And so 80% of the nearby stars that vary in brightness in the way that I told you have yet to be identified as such. So what can we do? It's way cheaper than you imagine. A one-meter telescope will cost you about $300,000. It would be great to put those across Africa, but we don't need to. If we reduce the size by 60%, we reduce the cost by 90%, right? So how can we do this? A year ago, my colleagues and I founded the African Astronomical Society, the first organization of African professionals that's continent-wide. And here are our first officers, and we know how to do this. And so in this fall, we're launching a new initiative that we call the One Telescope Op. Um, project, and it has as its goal to put at least one research telescope in every nation in the world, starting in the Southern Hemisphere and with Africa. And so we know how to do it. I've deployed telescopes on the ground and in space. And so the thing that we're not doing is that we're not starting a free telescope delivery service. Rather, we're uniting people into a global intellectual community, and we're uplifting people, and we're advancing human knowledge. Thank you very much.